Hi there once again, I'm Wallaber, and after 10 years I'm making a brand new Jelly Car game. This is devlog number 7, so the game's in the thick of production, and once again I want to talk about playtesting. I've talked quite a bit in previous videos about the value of playtesting and how much you can learn about your game by watching other people play it. So if you're watching this, you're probably already convinced that playtesting is valuable, so let's talk about how to do it. If you ask most devs, they'll tell you that the ideal way to do playtesting is live, in-person playtesting. You hand someone a build of your game, you peer over their shoulder, and you watch them play. Lots of indie devs will do this at things like conventions and events. Or of course you can just invite people over or go find places where people gather and have them play your game. You're in one place, you can bring playtesters through rapidly and get lots of input in a short period of time. And of course you're directly watching them play so you can see their facial expressions, you can see when they're confused, you can see when they're happy. Also generally you provide the device with the build on it so security isn't much of a problem. The downsides to live in-person testing, it's tricky to organize, it takes a big time investment and sometimes travel on the part of the dev. And of course, things like a global pandemic can sometimes make it not an option. On the complete opposite end, you have asynchronous remote testing, where basically you send out builds to people and ask them to record themselves playing the game and send you back that video. This of course is much easier to arrange because you just simply need to find a group of people, send them builds, and hope they send you back video. Which means with very little time investment, over time you can start to accumulate lots of playtesting that you can then observe. The downside of this, of course, is that you're really relying on those playtesters to actually download your game, play it with screen recording, and then package up and send that video to you somehow. Also, you have to be careful because you are sending out your game to other people, so build security can be a concern. Now, one method that's maybe a little less commonly talked about is live remote playtesting. And over the past few weeks, I've been doing a bunch of playtesting using this method, so I'm gonna describe it in a little more detail. So the basic idea here is that someone connects to your computer, they connect their controller or keyboard, and they provide the inputs to the game that's running on your computer, and your screen is being broadcast back to them. If you try something like Remote Play Together on Steam, it's very similar. I'm using something called Parsec for this, which you may have heard of, and it's a fantastic app for basically sharing your screen and allowing the remote players to have input into the game. If you've used Parsec casually, it's most often used for playing local co-op or local multiplayer games remotely with friends. But it works great for playtest. First step is to set up time slots for playtesters to play. I use an app called slotted.co to arrange the time slots and the sign up process. It's also really important to try and spread the times around throughout the day, early in the morning, middle of the day, late at night, as much as possible to accommodate playtesters who are in different time zones, countries, regions. Okay, so playtesters sign up on Slotted and they have a specific time that they're going to play the game. At the allotted time, I have my playtesters join a voice chat on Discord so we can talk to each other. I then have them send a friend request to a special testing account I've made on Parsec. Once I've accepted their friend request and they've confirmed their email on Parsec, they can connect to my computer. On my computer, I have the latest build of the game running, which they then see, and I have them either connect a controller or use their keyboard to control the game remotely. At this point, it's a regular playtest. I let them play the game and I get to watch what they're doing there on my screen. And because we're on Discord, of course, I can hear the players reacting to their gameplay and ask them questions when something comes up. At the end of their time slot, I have them disconnect and then I go find the next playtester, contact them on Discord and repeat the process. There are a couple of really big benefits of this type of playtesting. One is that you can turn around new builds very easily. In between playtests, you can make a few changes and make a new build, and boom, you're getting feedback on your latest changes. And of course, because the build is running on your machine, it's completely secure. You're not sending the build out to anyone after the playtest. The playtester does not have access to the game. And things like crashes or save data are right there on your machine for debugging. The most common question about this is, what about lag? Jellycar is an action platforming game where responsive controls are really important, and so far, the experience has been fantastic. It does take a little effort to adjust the settings on Parsec, things like maybe reducing the bandwidth or the resolution. And generally what's important is the upload speed of you, the developer, because you will be streaming the video to the player. On the player side, they're just sending inputs, so their internet connection speed is actually less important. And overall, I've been doing it for several weeks now, and the results have been great. In fact, actually, there was recent news that Unity bought Parsec. After having done some playtests like this, I'm really looking forward to the day that potentially Parsec is built right into the Unity editor. If right in the editor, I could just hit play and have a remote player connect and watch them playtest my game, that would be an amazing productivity increase. There are some engines out there that already do something like this. I frequently watch Vimlark, who you may know here from YouTube, and he frequently works on his games using the Construct engine on Twitch. And in the middle of the stream, when he's reached some point of progress on his game, he can just 
pop up a QR code and other people watching his stream can play test the game instantly and he can watch them play it. It's fantastic and that kind of tight turnaround is what allows games to be iterated and improved which is extremely important to creating high quality games. So my big wish for Unity is for them to integrate Parsec right into the Unity editor for this exact purpose. Unity if you're listening, give it a shot. I would really improve the productivity of your devs. Not to mention, of course, that if Parsec was built into Unity and something you could embed into a build, it would mean you could make local multiplayer games that just work online without any netcode. So that's a quick recap of how I've been doing playtesting remotely using Parsec and Discord for Jelly Car Worlds. And of course, playtesting is unbelievably valuable. Here's just a few things I noticed from recent rounds of playtests in Jelly Car. Number one, whether they are an experienced game player or a beginner game player, especially when playing on controller, no one figures out what button to press to enter into a door and go into a level. I thought I was being clever with this little layout of buttons that represent the locations of face buttons on a standard game controller and that the location on there would indicate the button. But most players would stop here for a second and fiddle around and try different buttons until they finally figured out how to enter the door. In the game, I also have objects that can trigger other objects, like these pressure plates here. And when you touch a pressure plate, some other object might react. Recently, I improved the visuals on how to convey this connection with these little antennas. And I put little labels on each antenna so that you could know this object will trigger that object. And I label them with letters starting from A. Well, guess what also is a prominent A? The A button on almost any game controller. And many players during recent playtests confused these labels with button prompts. Another quick one, here is a menu with only two things to choose. Can you tell which one is currently selected? Yeah, me either. Just using color alone to denote the selected object works great when you have a large number because then one stands out as clearly being selected. But when you only have two things, you can't tell which one is which. I also recently added some cameras to zoom over and show you when things happened in the world. Like for example, when the door opens that lets you exit the world. However, I didn't pause the action during these cutout cams and frequently after the camera would come back, your car would be in some new place and players were confused. Not to mention, of course, tons and tons of individual notes for individual level revisions. Okay, I'm gonna keep playtesting and I'll be using this remote playtesting method using Parsec and Discord that I've talked about in this video while I continue the development of Jellycar Worlds. I'll see you next time.